Hello and welcome back to the Old School Iron Man. And this is the third episode. Just finishing off last episode where we got ourselves up to 99 fishing. And with this third episode, don't worry, we're not going for a third 99. That would be absolutely crazy, especially because I kind of got the two easy ones out. The first thing I want to do this episode is unlock the Graceful Outfit. The Graceful Outfit is a very good thing for old school because it reduces your weight by about like 30 kilograms, I think. And at the same time, it gives you a 30% increase on your run energy restoration. So it's just immensely powerful for getting it around the game, especially in our early stage where we have like no good teleports to get basically anywhere. So to get graceful, we have to do one of the rooftop agility courses. If we look at the courses, the two ones we can do for Marks of Grace are Sears and Paul of Nietzsche. Because if you happen to be 20 levels above the course you're going to be doing, then you get marks at one fifth the rate. So while Canifis is the best marks per hour, Sears is a much shorter lap than Paul of Nietzsche. So therefore Sears is better marks per hour. So we're gonna be doing the Sears course. But there's another thing about the Sears course. The Kandarin Easy Diary here has a special effect that when you have it completed, you get 5% more mark when doing the Sears Agility course. So that's 5% less time spent training agility. So why the hell not? Let's do it. Uh, we have all the skill requirements. They're pretty low, like 20 agility, 13 farming. One cool trick is that when you come up here to uh, go over this log balance over here, if you bring a pickaxe, you can get the coal along your way um, as it's a medium die requirement. We're not doing the medium die right now, but, you know, might as well get it while we're here. Picking those five flax, we finished the easy diary. It's really like just a lot of running around and getting some items out of the bank. But if we talk to the wedge, he will give us our rewards. I'm going to put the rewards on screen here. But most of all, we really care about the 5% extra marks on the Sears Agility course. On top of that, we also got this Antique Lamp, which can go in any skill above level 30. I'd love to put this into like Runecrafting or Slayer. But right now, our only like valuable skill to put in it above level 30 is Herblore. And that's a kind of nice level because we got 38 Herblore. And 38 Herblore lets us make Prayer Potions so we can start using our Renars to get Prayer up in case we ever want to do any sort of combat uh, but those will be not useful until at least we get 43 prayer and we have access to all of the protection prayers but let's start some agility the series course is pretty cool we just gotta jump around the rooftops here the only downside is that we end up pretty far away from the start location and if we had the hard task down we could teleport right to the bank and of course if we had the high mage level but instead we just need to make that run so it's been about an hour and we're up to 76 laps done. Nice. We have 30 marks of grace now, which means we can buy the first piece in the outfit. I'm going to go ahead and buy it now. Normally people wait all the way to get the full 260 marks, but our energy slightly decreases on this year's agility course by the time we run back to the start of the lap. So the gloves here give us negative three kilograms of weight and plus 3% energy restoration. Um, so hopefully that's enough to maintain our run energy at 100% while using the course, but we'll see. And if we need to, we'll come back in 35 marks and buy the hood. And that is our 35th marks of grace here. So after this lap, we're going to go ahead and buy the helmet. I think, yeah, the helmet is the one that costs 35. I think it should now be enough that I'll be able to maintain my run, at least when I'm like semi-actively doing it. Like if I'm pick perfect, I lose energy, but otherwise... I don't, so I think I'll be able to stock up the rest of the Marks of Grace after buying this piece. And there it is, the final Mark of Grace. This will get us up to 195. And the hood and gloves that we own cost a total of 65. So that means we have 260 Marks of Grace, which is enough to get the full Graceful outfit. This was lap 1295, so pretty good. All things considered, I was estimating 1300. But one really cool thing that I learned from this is that marks spawn based on your time spent on the course. So if you're AFKing or being like 
really inactive, say you're like doing something else while training agility, it's best to have your AFK moments on the course instead of here when the course is over because you're not spawning any marks. But if I were to go over and start next lap and AFK up there, then it starts the timer for marks. So that's why um, we got 260 marks in 1300, which is just under one every five laps but if i was didn't have any afk time at all i think it would have been much higher like 1350 even 1400 total laps so by the cape the top the legs and the boots that's all six pieces uh, very nice and we can equip the full set and if we look at the set bonus here uh you can see wearing the full graceful outfit increases run energy restoration by 30 percent if we're just standing still, you can see we're getting from 80 to 100% energy in 40 seconds. But if we didn't have the outfit on, it would take about a minute to do that. So essentially what this does is it increases the amount of uptime. We can be at 100%, meaning we can run more places. On top of that, we have negative 25 kilograms uh, from the outfit. It's 24 because we have a fishing cape in our inventory. But this means that when we're running around places, we can be uh, way more efficient. And it's just such a great thing to get early on in the account because as an Iron Man, we don't have good access to energy restoration items. So we've been walking a lot of places and now we won't need to walk as much. One thing I completely forgot to mention is that we got ourselves up to 79 agility and we're all of 80k away from level 80. At that point, we'll move on from Rilekka. So we probably won't even get the benefit of the Seer's Diary. It's still like good XP per hour once you have the teleport in comparison with Rilekka, but as an Iron Man, we're definitely going to value the Marks of Grace we get from the Relica course over the increased XP per hour from the Sears course. But all in all, we have most of the shortcuts we need. Uh, with a plus five Summer Pie boost, there's only, is it five that we can't do? And most of them are not relevant to us, at least for a very long time. Uh, agility wise for shortcuts and unlocking things and diaries we're pretty much done it's just going to be for marks of grace for stamina's uh, gp for agility pyramid or any sort of other thing like that it feels so nice to just like run around and not be out of energy like i ran from the already farm patch to here and i still have 50 percent energy it's it's just it's so different it feels insane i wish it was just like this from the start of the game so our next grind is going to be the rune scimitar these zamrak warriors over here drop it at a one in 50 rate so we can go ahead and attack it and i believe if we walk behind this vent we're able to safe spot them so we'll just let them walk up here and there we go the lizard being in the way doesn't really matter uh, but they have very low mage defense so we should be able to deal with it relatively quickly. Uh, it's a 1 in 50 drop rate. 45 KC later, we pick up the Rune Scimitar. The next thing we want to do is do the easy Karend and Kibos tasks. This gives us the Rada's Blessing, which has an easy teleport to the Woodcutting Guild. Uh, we get three teleports a day, and it's going to be our AFK for the future. And uh, I just want a nice teleport there, because otherwise, it takes forever to get there, and... For example, when I like go to eat dinner, I can just quickly teleport there and start AFKing, chopping some yews. The two things to note for tasks is we have to go get 15% Hisidious Favor. I'm going to go all the way up to 100% uh, just for convenience factor so we can lock it in and all that sort of stuff. And then we don't need to worry about it. And then also we have to start the Queen of Thieves quest, which is I'm just going to complete that quest as well. Uh, it requires 20 Piscarillius favor, but we were smart enough to put that favor certificate into Piscarillius. So that means we can skip the favor grinding for that. First task done for opening up the general store. We might as well uh, complete the Queen of Thieves quest because it'll get us 10% more uh, favor in Piscarillius. So this is how we gain Hesidia's favor. The only way to go from 0 to 5 is to push this plow. Gain a little bit of favor. I'm not sure every time you push it, but it's it's kind of pretty random. Um, but it breaks every once in a while. You have to repair it, get some crafting XP, and then you keep pushing it. Uh, so we're going to be here until 5% favor. And that's 5% favor. I want to say that took like 5 minutes, maybe. It's not too big of a deal. I remember watching on 
what was it, Twisted Leagues, it was like a mass scramble to get to those plows because only one person can be on a plow at a time. And uh, yeah, led to some hijinks to say the least. So we're now going to be combining saltpeter with compost. We need a total of 400 of it to get up to 45% favor. And at 45% favor, we can do the mess all. Uh, so we're going to make 400 of these. You can do them like very quickly uh, by using them on like one after another, but I need some AFK time. So I'm going to finish this up while I eat dinner. So instead of actually bringing the buckets to her individually, she'll actually take the buckets right out of your bank to just save you so much time making the trips. We go here, we donate our fertilizer and we're up to 45%. So this is the mess hall. Um, there are a total of three items we can make, uh, stew, pizza, and pie. And depends on how what they've been served recently and what they want that the appreciation changes and that's how much experience you get. Now, if we look at the appreciation, it's at 33.3%, so that's fine. Uh, and we serve at the buffet table, and we get a big XP drop of about 2,400. And as they eat it, the appreciation actually is going to go down. And once it gets low enough, we'll hop to a new world. Uh, but one of those gave us like 8% favor, so we need to do another 4 or 5 inventories, and then we'll be up to 100%. And with this last inventory, we should have, yes, 100%. Asidious favor. We can now speak to Hosa, who's in the Karen Castle Square, and that contributes to the statue for House Asidious and kind of locks in our favor. I don't think it actually goes down anymore, but it's just a good thing uh, to do. Now, one of the benefits of getting up to 100% Asidious favor is if we look here at 60%, we get access to the Asidious Farming Guild. You also need level 45 farming to get to the first area of it, which we have. So we can come and enter in here. To unlock the west wing here, you need 65. And to unlock the other wing, you need 85 to get up here. But the farming guild is, I think, one of the more unique things that I was looking for. Because it completely changes how Iron Man farming is. You can get these farming contracts. And when you complete the contract, you get seed packs which gives you seeds, so farming kind of becomes a self-fulfilling ecosystem instead of having to get all your seeds from PVM to get your farming up. So I just think that the skill is going to end up working out a lot better in this, but we'll see. So here's Guildmaster Jane, and if we talk to her, we can ask for a farming con contract. I think we go, do you have any jobs for me? And for now, we can only do easy contracts. Once we get higher, it'll do medium and hard, but it'll go up to our farming level, I believe, so we can get anything under level 61 that can be planted in the farming guild. So all she wants is for us to grow some onions, which should be more than easy. Now those will take about 30 minutes to grow, so we're going to do some wood cutting in the meantime. So when we do the Rada's Blessing teleport, we get teleported right here, uh, just south of the wood cutting guild, so we can run north and uh, walk right in. So it's very convenient for that. But the only problem is that there's only three teleports per day, so I'm going to be uh, maybe liberal with it till I run out, but try not to run out. And this is going to be our next AFK now that we have something else to do. The Woodcutting Guild hosts yew trees, magic trees, and redwood trees right here in a convenient location. And there's a really cool thing about this Woodcutting Guild is that they have a special effect where while you're inside the woodcutting guild, you have plus seven virtual levels. So right now we're chopping this tree as if we're level 73 woodcutting, which is really nice because that means we get logs faster, though these are yew trees, so they take forever anyways. But the main reason why we're here is we want to do yew birdhouses. Um, we can do yew birdhouses all the way from 59 hunter up to 89 hunter. And to get that gap is about... 4,000 to 5,000 birdhouses depends on where you get hunter from other sources, quests, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get 4,500 yew logs while I'm AFKing, whether I'm working, editing videos, eating food, not, can't actively play the game. I'm going to go ahead and AFK this way. And the bank is all of like 10 squares away. So this dragon axe is going to pay off so much though. Oh, so to actually claim the contract, you have to fully harvest them. I guess that's uh, to prevent stacking like 
finishing four contracts in a row that are all onion. But now that it's been fully harvested, if we go to Guildmaster Jane, we complete the farming contract and we get this seed back. And depending on the difficulty of the contract, we get various seeds. So if we just spam click, we picked up six Hairlander seeds, 10 Nesturium, 24 Wild Bloods, which I think are hop seeds, and four Belladonas. Now we go get a new contract. And we're going to get an easy one again. And we need to grow some limpwort roots. And I, I don't think I actually have any limpwort root seeds. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get one of those. So it turns out that the best way for us to get a limpwort seed is thieving from these master farmers. So we're going to have to train up our thieving to at least 38 uh, by going to these fruit stalls, which require 25 thieving. These first couple seeds are going to be really annoying to get because we don't have the backlog of the contracts and unfortunately we got a tough one uh, for our second contract instead of getting more onions or cabbages. So we're going to be thieving from this fruit stall until 38 thieving. Uh, it'll take quite a bit but what we're going to do is we are going to keep the Galova Nova fruit tops and the strange fruit the strange fruit restores run energy and the Glova Nova fruit tops are used in a herbler boost. There's 38 thieving. It actually wasn't that bad. Uh, while I was paying attention, about 34k experience per hour, and we picked up a lot of strange, strange fruit and Glova Nova fruit tops. I'll probably come back here for training up to probably like 55 before we go to the Polnivich bandits. So the plan is to pickpocket from this master farmer until we get a limpwort seed. It's 1 in 80. Um, so I don't think it'll take that long. But it's going to be pretty annoying because our success rate is like 60% right now. We got the limpwort seed so we can plant it in. It goes in the flower patch, yes. So we take seed dipper, rake, super compost. Go right away. I'm going, these, this limpwort seed only takes 20 minutes to grow. Um, so out of sheer convenience, I'm just going to actually stay here and preemptively pickpocket from the master farmer just in case our next one is something we don't have. Eventually we will get to a point where we can not have to get the individual seeds, but until that happens, um, this is just a good starting measure. And then we get the ball rolling and it just speeds downhill and next thing we know we have like 2,000 herb seeds in the bank. So this is the power of these contracts. We got four limpwort seeds so we can, I think I'll go ahead and pre-plant one. Worst case scenario we can just harvest it. Um, but we got five Calcot trees and I think each one gives like 8k experience. So that was 40k farming experience. So the next goal we want to get up to is 61 crafting. We need to get 60 crafting to be able to do bird houses. Here, 61 crafting is one of the requirements. We're far off having all the requirements, but I thought if we're going to 60, we might as well just get one more level and get all the way up to 61. So our plan here is to buy out the pineapples for ultra compost, buckets of sand, because we need to get about 2.5k of them. And then with the last two inventory spots, instead of hopping, I'm just going to buy two soda ash to save us a little bit of giant seaweed because the more giant seaweed we save pre-lunar diplomacy that means we get more molten glass out of it in the end. You are able to mine your own buckets of sand by mining sandstone but each bucket ends up costing 50 gp each instead of the five that it costs here. Um, so this is just going to be much more economical for us because our cash deck is under 100k. So a couple changes we're making First off, we're going to be mining sand in order to get our buckets up and it's going only to level 60. I looked it up and it takes about 150 U birdhouse runs to go from level 60 to 61 crafting. And I figure that by the time I get to Lunar Diplomacy, I'll probably have done 150 birdhouse runs. And if I haven't done 150 birdhouse runs, then I can quickly just get that little bit last level that we need. The main function of sandstone, there's these four rocks right here. And we get random blocks from 1 kilogram to 10 kilograms. And then we can deposit it in the grinder. And then we get buckets out of it. Each kilogram is essentially one bucket with a little bit of d diminishing returns on the higher tier ones. So like this 10 kilogram block is 8 buckets. And these are both 1. And this 2 kilogram block is 2. And basically the reason why I decided to switch to this method instead 
is because we actually gain some mining XP out of it. So it's a benefit to the account instead of just hopping at chargers for hours on end. So we spent about 80 minutes here and we've gotten 1800 buckets of sand. I'd say essentially that it would be about 1500 per hour right at our level. And once we get to a higher level, get our rune pickaxe, all that sort of stuff, we'll be in a better situation. We'll probably get like 2K per hour, but uh, we can check with uh, Drew here. And we have 1557 buckets and 1824 buckets worth of sand. So we're going to buy all the buckets. And now our cash stack is below 10k. Oh my god. And we went ahead and smelted all of our soda ash and bucket of sand. We're up to 2800 molten glass. Which will get us 10k short of level 60 if we make unpowered orbs. So to fix that. What we're going to do is two quests. Hand in the sand quest is done. 9,000 crafting experience. It's actually the second most crafting experience you can get from a quest. Uh, but there's two main rewards that we get here. We get access to the Wizards Guild Rune Store once we have access in there. This was like an anti-botting measure they put in. So people had to do this quest first before they were able to buy runes. So it just limited the amount of people that could buy runes and bought it. And then also Bert gives us 84 sand each day if we go to talk to him. We just talk to Bert and right click sand and he delivers 84 buckets of sand to our bank. Once we eventually do the elite arty diary, uh, we will pick up the ability where it does it automatically and just adds every day. And the pirate Pete section of RFD is also done. This gave us the diving apparatus and the fishbowl, which is going to be helpful for how we're actually going to be training crafting, which I'll get into when we're there. So the plan for crafting is as follows. We're going to be training underwater here at this environment. And what we're going to do is we are going to make unpowered orbs. And every time we've done an inventory, we're going to go up. And the reason why we're doing this is because randomly while you're down here, you have the chance of getting seaweed spores to spawn. And each one of these seaweed spores essentially equates to about 20 giant seaweed at our farming level. The higher your farming level, the better it is. But at our level, it's about 20 each. So each seed spawn we get means more crafting experience and la di di la di da And we are making orbs instead of lantern lenses. Despite lantern lenses giving 2.5 more XP, these orbs can be somewhat valuable to turn into alks later. I don't know how hard I'll go on that, but I'm going to do orbs at least till 61. And then at 61, we'll have about like 2.5k unpowered orbs in the banks, which should last us more than more than we'll need for all the battle staffs drops we get and or buy from the shop with the Varrock diary. And there is level 60 crafting. Finished up our grind and we can now make U bird houses, which was the main reason for this. While doing this, we picked up 40 seaweed spores and 150 giant seaweed, which is really nice because we somewhat replenished the seaweed that we took by making it. And there, two more spores. So these 42 seeds, are gonna last us for quite a while because every time we do a farm run down here we have we generally get one seed back on average i would say so this is about 42 runs worth and each run is about probably 50 uh seaweed at our farming level now though this plant is really bad um so that's a lot of crafting xp banked and we'll do this again when we have something notable like we can alk down here but this is going to be the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I didn't get a 99 this episode, so sorry about that. But uh, if I got a 99 every episode, we'd only have 20 of these. But one thing we did uh, mess up this episode is we're down to a sub 10k cash stack. And our goal for the next episode is changing that. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one.